During Thanksgiving, City Volunteers in North California distribute supplies to the needy. After the MCO was lifted, volunteers in Malaysia are able to celebrate Recycling Day once more. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Hu Chao. Glad to have you here. Thanksgiving is a traditional holiday in the United States, a time for families to gather and share precious moments. However, affected by the pandemic, many Hispanic families who are already struggling to live have suffered economic losses in the past two years. Upon noticing their needs, city volunteers in Northern California cooperate with a local food bank to distribute fruits, vegetables, and cash cards to the needy. Yeah, they, I think they should have a perfect Thanksgiving this year um, with the food from Second Harvest, um, the cash card for sushi. Um, I think they um, will enjoy it this year. For most Americans, Thanksgiving Day is the most important holiday other than Christmas. However, due to the pandemic, many middle and low income families have been unable to spend the holiday well for two consecutive years. The prices is real up, gas is up, uh, milk is up, cheese is up, eggs is up. City volunteers from Northern California work with East Palo Alto Food Bank to distribute supplies and cash cards to disadvantaged Spanish speaking families. With many fruits and vegetables, they can finally spend a good Thanksgiving with their families. I will use Tsuji's cash card to buy food. I will also bake the Mexican cake dessert to enjoy the Thanksgiving dinner with my family. May God bless everyone and thanks God for helping me, sending so many people to help me and my family. After the pandemic, our incomes has dropped a lot. Tsuji's cash card really helps us a lot. At the distribution site, in addition to Tsiji volunteers, there were a group of Stanford University students who showed empathy to help those in need. I can speak Spanish and I can just talk to them. And I think that's one of the important things is that they see that, you know, other people are here that want to help, um, but also like empathize with them and are also like could be in the same situation and just making them feel comfortable is something that I like, I strive to do. Under the warm sun, the volunteers and beneficiaries reflect the most beautiful in painting in the early winter in Silicon Valley. At the end of June 2021, Naperville and Wood Ridge were hit by a tornado. City volunteers from Chicago have mobilized the whole three distributions after the tornado. Before Thanksgiving, volunteers once again issued cash cards and eco-friendly blankets. At the scene, there are also free gifts prepared by volunteers, bring warmth to disaster-affected residents before the upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas. Five months after tornado, Chicago Tsuji volunteers once again offer assistance to residents affected by the tornado, hoping that they will spend the winter peaceful. Our tornado was June 20th, 2021. So, so many people were already dealing with COVID or loss of job, um, whatever it may be. Um, it, it just hits so much harder, but also hits all of us. My home was uh, hit in a tornado and a tree came and crushed part of the house and we lost uh, a lot of stuff but we're very lucky because nobody was hurt. I got PTSD from the tornado so just being in the same place is hard just having flashbacks of that night. We're still out of our house right now we have a return date of January um, so two more months to go. I still go home to do my laundry, so it feels like I have my own home still. Um, I don't know that everybody would understand that, but not being in your own home is very hard. I don't know if you have this on. It's hard. It's just hard. After the tornado, Lauren had wound up in the hospital. And it's a lot to deal with. Um, just trying to stay positive about everything. Um, it definitely changes your life a lot. Someone from the Red Cross had introduced me to Amy ever since then for the last three months. It's just been wonderful when she knows so many people are in her corner helping her fight this battle and praying. It's crazy how many people, you know, can come together and 
hope the best for somebody that they don't even really know. It was, it was weird because the day before I had just gone through the bag that you gave me and the next day I got the letter so it, it was like fate. It was like you guys were right there thinking about me. Thank you so much for everything. I thought it was them asking have I filled up my bank yet to bring back in and when I and I thought oh I feel bad because I've been so busy doing all this but then when I opened it I got tears in my eyes because I'm thinking oh my gosh they still care. <laughs> In addition to providing cash cards and blankets, there are flowers gifts for everyone to choose at will. What, what a great opportunity at this time of year. You just yes. seem to know exactly what to do. The holidays are coming around. I've got small nieces and nephews. I want to be able to give gifts, but how do I do that? Today, I'm gonna to be able to do that. And it was such a... A fantastic surprise to see some of this additional things being, you know, provided for. I didn't have a ski hat, and so having one here that I was able to have for the cold weather is just so great. And the blanket. And the blanket's such a fantastic uh, gift, and we love it. The favorite things that I've gotten uh, was given to me today is this book, and inside every sentence it's the second one i've looked at today and they all make sense what i love about these is that they're simple enough anybody can understand universal makes what's good for me is good for you i was so grateful i was like thank you lord because i had no idea what i was going to do to get some things that I needed for the holidays, and I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you guys so much. I, I seen a, a lamp in the in store that I wanted. The stand-up lamp, you know, I can do that now for Christmas. Well, I'll be happy. It's just a blessing in heart, you know, and I love you, and I love the world. I really do, and I really like the idea of the bank that you guys have, where you give back. And they explained to me about the piggy bank. And I'm going to fill that bank up and I'm going to bring it back up here to you guys so I can help give to somebody. That's what I'm going to do and that's the promise. I promise you guys that. So um, to give back always is a good feeling. Always. You know. And receiving is good, but giving back is a rewarding feeling as well. It really is. I felt part of this mission. I felt part of it in giving and then receiving. And so I understand now that whole flow of how that love is generated around the world. And, I, and, I, and it makes me want to continue. It makes me want to do it again. And I did get another bank, a bigger bank, and it was just like, wow, let me hurry and feel that. But it is, it is, it is, it is really a joyful thing. And it felt great doing it. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Although there was a disaster during the pandemic, the victims who were helped by Ziji can still give back a little bit of what they can do to help others. The cycle of love has caused rainbow in the community, and Ziji's efforts to cultivate the community have been seen. In Kaohsiung, 71-year-old Mr. Zhou has a family of six people, yet five of the family members are physically and mentally disabled. The house was full of debris, rats, and cockroaches. Therefore, the Social Affairs Bureau invited Ziji volunteers to help clean and care for the family. The house of 71-year-old Mr. Zhou was full of garbage and smells. It is actually a place where a large family is staying. In a family of six, five of them are with physical disabilities. Later, we found that their living environment was not really good. A lot of things were holding there. When I saw it, the house was in a mess. We wanted to help with cleaning, so we posted the message inviting volunteers to come help. Rats sprang out and jumped around on the bed while cockroaches crawled around the wall, yet everyone still stuck to their positions to clean. By tidying up their living environment, they can have a better living quality. And a government home service providers can come in to help the father take a bath or deliver meals to them every day. 
reducing the mother's burden. It turned out that the client's son, who has physical and mental disabilities, likes collecting recyclables but doesn't know how to organize and pile them up at home. Before this, they had cleared out things for three times, but still there were a lot of stuff inside. That's why we asked Zizi to come help together. Thank you, Zizi Foundation, for sending 20 to 30 volunteers here to help with cleaning and clearing out things. With the concerted efforts of volunteers, Mr. Zhou's home has finally been renewed, and the whole family can have a clean and comfortable place to live. The 2021 Taiwan Healthcare Expo opened recently with more than 1,800 booths presenting the latest in medical and health technologies. Among them is Hualien Ziji Medical Center, the first hospital in the world to launch a therapy for bone marrow stem cells to induce nerve regeneration. This treatment gives hope to those who are paralyzed and are trying to walk again. I can't remember the scooter accident in the fall. I can't remember anything about it. 25-year-old Mr. Jin was paralyzed in the lower part of his body due to a traffic accident. While the NZG Medical Center is the first in the world to include bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells into clinical treatment. The regeneration of blood vessels and nerves and the regeneration of nerves allows them to be activated again for stroke patients, allowing their nerves to be repaired can help them stand up again, and for spinal cord injury, it also provides some opportunity for improvement. Bone marrow mesenchymal stem cell therapies like reconnecting the broken wires and slowly regenerating nerve cells through stem cells so that patients can progress from no feeling to be aware of their physical condition. We injected stem cells in damaged place some 46 sites up and down from the injury. This place where we introduce them is where the nerve that has been broken before. From the bottom to the top, there will be a reconnection. In addition to bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells to promote nerve regeneration, a long-term rehabilitation process is also needed to allow patients to slowly regain control of the body. In the future, this treatment is expected to benefit patients with spinal cord injury and more than 3.5 million people suffering from joint degeneration. Every third Sunday of the month, it's a recycling day for the Ziji Hualan Board in Selangor Branch. And as local MCO was lifted, the recycling points have begun operations once more. Residents were happy to get together to reduce the burden of planet Earth. Let's visit the volunteers and see how they're doing. Sunday morning at the Bukit Jalil Golf Resort, adults and children are here for recycling. The kids have fun and sweet it out. By putting in some effort, they can realize the importance of not washing things and will consider reusing items again instead of just throwing things away after one use. There are many first-time participants who are learning more about the recycling categories. I throw my recycling at home, but I don't separate it like they do here, so I came especially to learn. I hope to inspire my neighbors to do better in cleaning the recyclables because we have a recycling bin on the first floor of our building. During our volunteering time, they'll teach us many things, like recognizing that waste disposal can be categorized into recycling and garbage. Everything isn't just trash. After today, I can improve my own recyclables sorting efforts at home. These have been brought over. It's good because they have been cleaned. This is what we are teaching. Everyone should clean and wash it at home before sorting. This is the best. On this day, the recycling point at Sri Pataling is also back in operations. It's been a really long time since I have participated. I just want to do my share to help ensure our recycling protocol is continued.
cleaning the recycling items at the source, these volunteers can apply the lessons learned today in their life so that we can all make the world a better place to live in. The pandemic has made food delivery the new norm. However, germs and viruses spreading through the exterior package is still a concern of customers and workers. Three students from Tsijin International School of Kuala Lumpur came up with a solution. Through the use of LED ultraviolet rays, the system can ensure the exterior food package is sterilized and safe for people to handle. When it's nearing lunchtime outside the restaurant, there are many food delivery workers standing by. This has become the new normal for getting food these days, but some customers are afraid of the spread of germs through food delivery. Sometimes, I'll see customers place their food on the chair and then sanitize it, probably for safety concerns. Food delivery safety is a new issue many have to deal with, and three students from the Tsiji International School, Kuala Lumpur, have come up with a food delivery sterilization system as a solution. There is a solar panel on top to charge a solar battery to operate the controls. There are five UV lights here. When you place your food or parcel inside and close the lid, it will activate a switch to start sterilization. When the food arrives and there's still COVID around the packaging and in the food. So that's why we came up with this. Idea. From inspiration to complete project, it took the boys over a month to finish. However, this operating system is easy to use and well thought out. We designed it specifically for motorcycle riders. Because they are outside, they can rely on the sun to charge their batteries and not have to rely on other resources to charge, which is a bit more environmentally friendly. We also chose to use UV LED light because it's safer. If it was done with alcohol spray, it might accidentally get into the food. If this went into actual production, then it can benefit many people. This innovative design won a bronze medal in the 2021 KLESF International Challenge and also the recognition of the community. I think it definitely feels safer and you know, you don't have to worry too much about what uh, the, the transition time between him getting the food. If you make this to sterilize the food inside the box, it will be better for businesses. During COVID times, prevention needs to be done in all facets so as to avoid further spreading the infection. Parts of Indonesia have reduced current epidemic prevention and control to level one, with many schools beginning to resume face-to-face -face teaching. This includes students with disabilities in special education schools. When first national special school carried out activities on the first day of class, everything went smoothly and students were happy to be reunited with teachers and classmates. Let's join them there. Since Indonesia's pandemic prevention measures were reduced to level one, some schools have begun to gradually develop face-to-face -face teaching. As soon as the news was announced, many teachers and students were happy, especially students in special education schools. After a year and a half of online teaching, special education schools can finally launch face-to-face -face teaching activities among them is Tangerang, number one national special education school. The school requires teachers and students to abide by pandemic prevention measures. From the school gate to the classroom, students must undergo temperature tests, wear masks, and wash their hands. After that, teachers will record the status of each student. There are no gatherings as students go and return from school. Face-to-face -face teaching is divided into two groups. One group is in the morning and the other group is in the afternoon. Strict implementation of pandemic prevention measures is enforced. If they come in from the pickup area, we will take their temperature and let them wash their hands. And we will check whether the student wears a mask, has hand sanitizer, lunch boxes, water bottle, etc. Then we will guide them into the classroom. 
In order to maintain a safe distance, only 50 percent of the student capacity in the classroom are permitted, and students must follow a prearranged schedule by the teacher before they can come to the school. All students participating in face-to-face -face courses also have to obtain parental consent. Sebelum kita uh, melaksanakan tatap muka ini juga kami membuat link uh, persetujuan orang tua. Before the face-to-face -face classes started, we asked parents to vote upon the reception of the classes. From the results of the poll, 90 percent of parents agreed to face-to-face -face teaching. In order for teachers and parents to reach a consensus, we needed a week of preparation. The first day of face-to-face -face teaching made parents very happy. Parents often encountered difficulties during the period of online teaching. Now parents no longer need to worry about their children's homework because they can go back to school safely with peace of mind. I'm very happy that my child can go to school again, otherwise it will be difficult to teach at home. I believe that able-bodied children have attention issue, that alone children with special needs, which may find it even more difficult to keep up with their lessons. They cannot concentrate on their lessons, so how can they learn? With the resumption of face-to-face -face teaching activities, many hope that the pandemic will continue to cool, allowing students to attend classes normally and continue to make good progress. Recently, Weichun Dragons baseball team started a two-week fall training session. Besides training the body, there are also courses led by Tsuji volunteers, teaching baseball players how to practice eco-friendliness and understand the concept of vegetarianism. As the Wei Chun Dragons train their baseball players through enhancing their stamina, city volunteers were invited to meet the players and share with them eco-friendly ethics. Through the process, volunteers discovered that the concept of eco-friendliness was already being practiced by these players. In the past, I would purchase bottled water at a convenience store. But now I will use my own bottle and fill it up with drinking water at the fountain or at home. Everyone must work together to sustain our planet. We must use the same spirit on the baseball field and apply it to eco-friendly topics. As it turns out, in 2019, these baseball players have already made their way to a recycling station, participating in the recycling process and understanding the ideal of cleanliness at the source. We want to promote vegetarianism to young people. It's also part of the promotion of eco-friendliness. Weichun Dragons might become the eco-friendly model of professional baseball. Let us hope that they may spread the influence of kindness to their fans and lead them into loving the environment. In Taichung, Beichun District, a group of young people followed city volunteers in the activity of farming. Through this precious experience, many have learned the valuable lessons of loving the environment and protecting lives through vegetarianism. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.